Making faces in SketchUp is more or less automatic. There are just two rules that you have to observe. The first one is SketchUp will make a face for you if you close a loop. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line from this endpoint to this one, and SketchUp will make a surface. And that works on straight edges and curves as well. Curves are made up of short segments. The second rule is that all of the edges must lie in the same plane. If I try to close this loop, no surface is generated. That's because one of these edges isn't in the red-green plane, and it's very hard to see. To actually spot that, I might need to go into a side view. I'll press Command-4 and then press J to toggle parallel mode. If you look right over here, you can just see that this is slightly out of plane. To fix this, I'm going to delete this edge, zoom in closer, and then move this edge along the blue axis. So I'd like to lock that inference by holding down Shift, and then I'll click over here to reference this point. Now I should be able to create a face. You can delete faces by deleting the edges that make them up. But you can't erase a face. I'll use the eraser tool and click on this face and nothing happens. Instead what I can do is use the select tool and click on it, and then press the delete key, and the face is gone. I can recreate the face by tracing over an existing edge. There's no need to delete an edge and then draw it in again. Instead, just trace over an existing edge and the face will be recreated. Now this edge here is not duplicated when I trace over it. When I first started using SketchUp, I thought that was cause for alarm because in AutoCAD, if you have coincident lines, it can become a problem later on. Let's verify this by looking at model info under statistics. This model just has four edges and one face. I'll go ahead and select the face and delete it, and then I'll trace over one of the edges, and the only thing that changed was that we now have a face. We still have just four edges. You can break edges and faces by drawing a line across them. And this is a new feature in SketchUp 7. In previous versions, you had to draw a line from one edge to another edge for this to happen. Otherwise, you'd get a solid profile line going across the entire object and it wouldn't break the surfaces into separate pieces like we have here. Because these faces are separated, I could push and pull them individually. I'll use the eraser tool and erase these inner edges. We're left with a single healed face. It's important to realize that these edges are still broken, and that happens because of the existence of these short segments out here. If I erase these segments, SketchUp automatically heals these edges. It's possible to break edges so they don't heal either intentionally or more often inadvertently. To break an edge, draw a line from an endpoint to some arbitrary point along the edge. Now I have two separate edges. This becomes an issue later if you push-pull this surface up. You'll have a seam line here and you'll have separate surfaces in the height dimension. To avoid this, you can fix the situation by drawing a new line from the endpoints to some arbitrary point off to the side. Then, erase this line. SketchUp will automatically heal this edge, making it whole. And if I push-pull this surface up, we no longer have that problem. There are two sides to every face. And right now we're looking at the back color of these faces, which by default is this blue-gray. White represents the front side of the face and unfortunately it's all underneath here. Most of the time when you're creating things, you'll be push-pulling up objects that you create, let's say, and SketchUp will automatically orient the faces correctly. However, in this case, because I broke this edge and then push-pulled up part of it, SketchUp didn't get it right. So I'm going to have to go back and manually reverse some of these faces. I'll right-click on this face and choose Reverse Faces and that flips that individual face. It would be really tedious if I had to do that to every single surface. Fortunately, SketchUp is smarter than that, and all you have to do is orient one face correctly. Then go back, right-click on it, and choose Orient Faces. 
SketchUp will actually analyze this whole contiguous shape and orient all of the surfaces to face outward. Similarly, if I reverse this face and then chose Orient Faces, everything would get flipped backwards again. There's a Ruby script that's helpful with reversing faces, written by Todd Birch. I'll load that. Occasionally, in more complex models, face orientation might be all messed up, and Orient Faces might not do the trick. This is where this particular tool comes in handy. You can just left-click on a face to reverse its orientation, one way or the other. So you can just work your way around and click on things very quickly to orient faces.